Good morning, folks. We've got news all over the place today on the eve of Odin's opposition and my only restful day of the year. We've got weirdness, but let's begin at our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Last 24 hours showing bright points on the side. Coronal hole darkly paints the southern hemisphere with a complex arrangement of surface features to its north. We've had no solar flares. Sunspot numbers about to be zero again. The solar wind from the southern opening arrived yesterday with fairly fast speed, but with the same magnetic orientation as Earth's field, which promotes deflection rather than coupling, and that holds for the entire stream thus far, failing to produce geomagnetic effects. But then again, there is a second component expected to impact today. It is unlikely to be magnetically similar. By the way, the northern polar coronal hole seems to be poking out everywhere, another one visible up there now. That complex arrangement north of the coronal holes has a number of filamentary structures and surface magnetism that could produce sunspots in the following weeks. Given the size and stable bodybuilding ongoing within those filaments, we'd prefer they released on the far side and that we don't see them swing around past Earth again. Let's quickly check out the last day of CONUS from GO-16, first with the day cloud phase distinction in RGB air mass and then shifting to lightning. Huge display of global electric circuit return crossing the states here, watching again as more power than the U.S. uses in a year lights up the sky in a few hours. Sticking with the weather, you probably heard about all the snow in Colorado. No need to check the video date. Yes, that is summer solstice snow. Well, it happened again for the second time in a week, this time in Newfoundland. After that first highway slide-off shot, all of these are from eastern Canada yesterday. Now let's couple that cold with yesterday's Antarctic story. It was five years ago they figured out the melting of the glaciers might be natural and not our pollution somehow melting everything from below. The discoveries continued until the cause of the melting was finally definitively pegged as the volcanoes and bringing us today, where we know yet another of the glaciers down there is definitively volcanically melting. This time, Pine Island, a propagandist dream turned to ash literally. Folks, those coronal hole phase authors from yesterday had more up their sleeve. This time they detail how between 50 and 80 percent of the coronal hole power is confined to 1 to 4 percent of the coronal hole area, which means what they're actually seeing and measuring are the planetary connections to our star in those zones, especially since they describe such flux points, and that is indeed where the interplanetary field links up the spheres. Sort of a head-scratcher here, so almost all Japanese tea leaves came back well over the radiation limit. No surprise there. But oddly, it was due to the natural types of radiation being quadruple what's allowed, with the man-made cesium from Fukushima only being found within 400 kilometers of the plant, and at that, surprisingly low activity levels. Well, speaking of Japan, props on the accomplishment, but this has bad idea written all over it. They have reached Ryugu asteroid, and in 2020 it will return actual samples to Earth. Did anyone see the movie Life? It really just takes one to destroy everything. Worth a peek if you haven't seen it. A peek at Saturn in opposition here, closest point of the year just after midnight for us in the U.S., full moon hours later. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 3.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.